Welcome back people. Um, it's Friday the 24th of February and it's 1.30 in the morning. Probably looking a bit tired because we've had no sleep. Um, I say we because I've got young Matt with me. We're on a little road trip. We're going to France um, to a lake called Lac Briel. Um, yeah, going to head down to Folkestone now, get on the train and do the crossing. Um, film some bits along the way but it's like I say it's dark at the moment so we're probably going to struggle with, with a bit of filming but we'll get as much as we can of the road trip heading down yeah see you soon stop off, a little bite to eat and a coffee. Um, yeah, we're an hour away from the lake. We had a nice clean run on the train and the first part of the journey. So it's all going well. Um, just the last little bit to do now and we'll be there. So next time you see us, hopefully we'll be at the lake. We'll have a little walk around and show you what's what. Let's get back to it. down here, didn't it? Along this margin. Underneath that tree there. Nice swims. Loads of water in between each swim. The island out there. Got a corner and a back channel that goes to the other side. Long old island. Goes out into open water, but open water is quite shallow. Um, but out here, halfway across, it's like eight foot, and then it goes up to the island shelf, um, around quite tight to the islands, like probably three foot deep along there. Nice gravelly spots along there. You can actually get onto the island by walking across that channel in your waders, so you can bait up by hand, which is nice which we might do um, and yeah just having a little walk around now trying to see what see what we can see um, they don't give themselves away loads in here but might see the odd bubble or fish cruising about um, but yeah it's looking good it's good to be back haven't been here for probably five years I think been here um, twice before, once on a work party week and then once on an actual fishing trip with some mates. Um, yeah, I think the fish in here go to 60, I think it was 68 or 67 pound at the right time of year. A couple of mirrors and then there's a couple of good 50 pound commons that are just underneath the 60 mark. Yeah, looking good. Anyway, we'll go round. Um, See what we can find. Down the bottom end of the lake now. Does look good. Not a uh, not a lot of fish signs yet, but generally looks good. Um, like I say, they don't give themselves away easy in here, but and it has been fishing slow apparently. There's been a couple of lads on last week. They had a few bites, but when the temperatures got cold at night, it slowed up. Um, so yeah, it is, a, it is a little bit chilly, but it's still above freezing at night. So we've got a chance. Just have to see how we get on. Yeah, very excited. Carry on round and uh, decide where we're gonna go. But I think we're gonna start in a swim called the Oak, which is over there fish up to the island where that deep this, this side of the island's a lot deeper in the channel rather than this side's quite well shallower so I think we'll start where we've got a good uh, mixture of depths over that side so 
spread our odds out and see if we can find any. Welcome to the bivvy. As you can see, I'm set up in the bivvy now. Um, time is getting on, so I don't know how much filming I'm going to get done today. It's our first day here. Um, obviously, everyone knows that when you turn up onto a lake, especially in France, there's a lot to sort out. Um, so, and yeah, like I say, it's gone well gone midday now. Got, got the afternoon to get these rods set, so I'll try to film as much as I can today, but whatever I don't film, I'll get tomorrow. Um, but basically, I'm fishing in a swim called the Oaks that I'll show you in a sec. Um, I'm going to fish three rods kind of towards the island, two definitely towards the island. Um, I've gone out there in the boat and felt around with the pole, um, net pole and about two, three rod lengths off of, the, off of the island, it drops down to a nice four or five foot spot, like depth. Um, and there's like patches of gravel out there, nice pea shingle sort of gravel. Um, so I'm gonna put two at that sort of um, distance away from the island. If you go closer, it goes up to like two, two foot. Um, it's a bit shallow for this time of year, so I've gone down into like the, yeah, like say four and a half, five foot deep. Um, and uh, that, them, them two spots feel really good for a bite. A little, I'm going to just put a little handful of bait over there for tonight. Just enough to get a bite, a mixed particle, a um, bit of pellet and crushed boilie, which I'll show you soon as well. Um, and the left hand rod is kind of towards the corner of the island, but I'm going to come like a rod length off of it, maybe a rod length and a half. And there's like a nice deep hole there, about eight foot, eight, eight and a half foot. Um, it's the deepest point in the lake. So that could be like a nice like nighttime spot, uh, somewhere where they might drop down as it gets cold at night at the moment. It's still February. Um, it's not been fishing amazing, um, but there's a chance of a bite. A couple of fish have been out last week. So yeah, we'll see what we can do. I'm excited, I'm tired, <laughs> but um, I'm going to do my best to get as much footage as I can today, but whatever you don't see, you'll see tomorrow anyway. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to tie these rigs up. I'll show you what I'm putting out on each spot. Um, see if we can get ourselves a bite today or tonight. Um, yeah, see how we go. Rods are out. Three out towards the island. Trying to cover three different depths or at least two different depths, two of them are pretty similar but yeah, baited up down this margin as well just to, I've had fish in the summer off this margin um, it goes to about six foot off of this bush so I've pre-baited that, keep an eye on that over the next 24 hours and I might drop a rod there but this is the swim for now pretty show you, after all the carnage of setting up it's been absolutely manic I'm shattered to be honest, but it's all good. It's all good. BB's set up. It's got a ground sheet for once. Never fish with a ground sheet, but as I'm here for four nights, I um, thought I'd uh, treat myself with a bit of luxury. <laughs> yeah. New mat and sling, which I need to christen, hopefully. Lovely bit of gear, that. Yeah. Excited to use the new alarms as well. Got the new ATTs and the bobbins all, all look, sitting there looking pretty. Yeah, buzzing. Hopefully tonight or this evening or even in the morning we receive a take on them. But yeah, this is uh, going to be home for the next four nights. We're not doing a full week, but Four nights and four days. Matt's just set up down there. It was lucky enough that it's dry that we could uh, drive around as well. And as we we're the only ones on the lake, I thought, why not? It's not disturbing anyone. Matt's down there. You can see him. Zooming in, he's down there setting up. So yeah, happy days. Such a lovely place, so peaceful and quiet around here. But yeah, absolutely shattered. Gonna grab a beer, chill out, and uh, sit and relax, give Matt a hand setting up, get his rods out, and uh, we'll speak to you later on. Matty boy's all set up now. Just sorting out his uh, home for the cu next couple of nights. Oh, go on Matt. 
I've been getting savage liners. He's only just put that rod out. Last rod to go out. And his left hand rod has been getting savage liners fishing out to the island. There's definitely fish about. It's looking good. We've seen some bubbles over his spot as well and he's literally only just put it out about five, ten minutes ago. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. What are you saying, Matt? Hopefully you catch your first French fish, eh? Buzzing. <laughs> Buzzing. Hopefully, mate. It's looking good anyway. Come on, the rods. Sun's out. It's absolutely beautiful out. It's actually quite warm. It was in t-shirts. Well, Matt's still in a t-shirt, but it was in t-shirts a minute ago. Lovely. Yeah, hopefully this afternoon or evening one of our rods rips off. Good one, the boys. Set. Matt's just doing his now. Um, yeah, just wanted to close it up for the night. Uh, it's getting well. It's just about to get dark. It's getting a bit colder now. The sun's gone in. Um, but yeah, what a mega first day. Absolutely shattered. Uh, both really tired. It's been a long day setting up and driving here. And yeah, we got up at like one in the morning. I think I had barely any sleep. Um, but it's all worth it. All. Uh, well happy of what we've had today so yeah can't complain um, but a good night's sleep tonight would be nice and hopefully woken up in the morning with a fish but um, it's pretty pretty clear sky tonight so um, it's going to be a cold one um, but I wouldn't be complaining if there's day bites to be had in the sun and a good night's sleep tonight in the cold so yeah um, Good first day. Tomorrow we're going to get into the filming a bit more and show you exactly what we're what we've been up to. Today's just been a bit rushed and um, yeah, like I say, a bit of carnage. So, but we've got two we've got two fish under our belt already, a 24 and a 30. So uh, hopefully we can catch some more. Hopefully one of those big girls comes along. But for now, I'm going to say goodbye and I'll see you guys in the morning. Morning, everyone. Um, just woken up to a lovely, misty, beautiful morning. Um, not much to report from last night. It got cold in the night, um, but we kind of knew that was going to happen. Got a good night's sleep, which is the main thing. So I'm feeling fresh today and ready. Kind of feel like a, a new man today. So yeah, just tying up a new leader, um, the Plummet Legcore leader, and this is going to go out on the left hand rod. I'm actually going to move this rod because I haven't had any activity or seen any activity on this rod since we've been here. Um, it's out towards the corner of the island, which I'll show you soon. Um, and it's, I'm about a rod length, rod length and a half off of it. Um, it goes down into a nice deep hole and I thought that'd be good, you know, it's the deepest part of the lake. Um, they would be in cold at night, they could drop down there. So, but it's quite shitty well it's quite rubbish down there um so yeah it's not the cleanest so i'm gonna move it up the shelf a bit onto the corner of the island 
because um, the other two rods are actually they're about three four foot off the island but it, it's a nice depth nice five foot depth nice and clean so i'm going to bring it up a bit onto that five foot area around the corner of the island um, and hopefully that 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 rod starts to play play some action as well so matt's rods as well he's had his quite tight to the island and he's had a couple of bites now so yeah um, i think it's going to be daytime opportunities it's cloudy at the moment but hopefully when that sun comes up it comes through because i think the sun definitely played a big part in yesterday's bites um, it was like two three o'clock and then we started seeing bubbles and getting liners and then we started getting the takes so hopefully the same again today um, yeah and i'm gonna hopefully show you about how i'm placing these rods with the boat um, talk to you a bit more in depth about the spots I'm fishing and yeah go from there and we can go into a little bit more rig detail later on as well um, but yeah it's going to finish tying up this rig using the, uh, the gardener leg clip system there as well if you can see that leg clip system on the plummet leg claw it's got the quick change swivel on the end Yeah, this plummet's amazing. I'm really impressed with this. Nice, supple, easy to splice. So I'm just going to finish this, um, put a new rig on, and get this rod out there. Right, so here's that uh, leg core leader, the plummet leg core leader that I've just uh, spliced up and got ready. Coupled with the gardener leg clip system little tail rubber there a lot prefer a little tail rubber small one um, there's the lead three and a half ounce and the money rig that I like to use that's a um, size six mugger I know people would say it's quite small for France but this time of year I like to keep everything as small as possible really um, I've got so much confidence in the strength and that size still um, sometimes a small hook um, just sits in the mouth a bit better and just I find that you just get um, a better hook hold in the fish's mouth so I like to use a small hook if I can um, got a little way pink washed out pop up that's whittled down so it's critically balanced yeah we've all seen a runny rig but you can't, can't argue how devastating they are so that's how I use mine so this is going to be going out on corner of the island there just going to zoom in a bit corner of the island under the overhang um, just to the right side of that window reflection it's about five foot there nice and uh, nice and hard um, so yeah I'm going to go out there and drop this rig with the fire boat and then I'll show you how I'm doing that and I'll show you what bait I'm using. I'm just gonna go over what I'm putting in my mix and how I'm doing it. So in here I've got crushed boily that I've just crushed up and some 12 mils holes and that is the new Blake's HMV 12 mil and the Redfish Pro in 12 mil. Now I'm gonna come and have a look inside. Now I'm just gonna add some of the mixed pellet into that. Not too much pellet, I don't like too much pellet in the mix, but just a little bit here and there. Get them digging around. There's loads of little bits of food items in there. Make sure you get in this mat. A little bit more. There you go. Get that mixed up. You can see in there that already there's loads of different food items. Crush boil is probably one of the best, I think, for keeping fish on a spot keep them grabbing around and then the last thing I put in is the good helping of 
hemp and maize, or hemp and sweet corn, this is not actually maize. Uh, that good mix. Good mixture in there. Um, two good, really, really good big fish, fish mills in there. I don't mind mixing my boilies up. A bit, bit of colour. Different attractions leaking through the water. Tiny bit more of that. There you go. What do you reckon, doggy? You'd like some of that, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's my. That's uh, the bait mix done. Right. Um, so basically, just set up a new, new bait. I went out onto the island, um, had a little row around the lake, see if I could see any fish. And when I got to the other side, I jumped on the island and just moored the, the boat up, and uh, went over to where I'm sort of fishing now but right under the snags in the trees. I see the three dark shadows quite closer than, well, a lot closer than what I'm fishing to the island. So they're a lot shallower than I thought. So I'm gonna quickly sort this rig out, row out there and drop a rig right on their heads. Um, hopefully without spooking them, but um, they're right underneath that snag at the moment. So yeah, try to get a rod there and uh, see if we can get ourselves a bite. Just gonna go out and put this rod on them snags. Um, yeah, super, super buzzing for this now. Love finding them. Luckily, we have found them just, I say snags, it's just under some overhang trees. I don't think there's any snags actually in the water. So yeah, I'm gonna go over there now. Um, drop this bait in. I see three or four dark shapes under here. So, when I was having a look on the island, the first thing that caught my eye was the tail pattern. And then I looked for another three or four minutes and then I see the dark shapes come over. So, yeah, super exciting stuff. It's big drop, just a touch, touch more bait over it and then We'll be fishing. Right, you're not going to believe this. Um, Matt's rod's just absolutely ripped off and he had a, a nice slow big battle. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think he's got the biggest fish in the lake, which is like 60 plus. Uh, yeah, absolutely unreal. Probably the biggest fish I've seen on the bank. Um, and it's definitely the biggest fish he's ever seen. So just going to go over to him now and uh, yeah, sort this fish out get it on the bank and get it weighed, but what are you saying, Matty? I'm speechless. <laughs> speechless, yeah, I bet you are. What way you want it? That's it. Nice, easy as that. Right, let's get rid of the rod and net. Look at that. Nice chunky one. Yeah. Just having a beer and a catch up with Julie and Mark. And the rod's absolutely screamed off. Look at this nice little character. After a move as well. Move the rods a little bit to the right underneath the trees and the snags. And it's paid off. Happy days. Hello everyone, um, another quiet cold night last night. I think it got down to about yeah. one, maybe zero. Uh, there's a light frost, but not too, too bad. Um, yeah, nothing to report fish wise. A uh, load of liners this morning. I thought I was gonna get a take. It's now about 10 o'clock and it hasn't happened yet, but I've just moved the rod um, under the snags again, but just on a little bag. Uh, not too much bait over it, see if I could just, yeah, like, get a quicker bite rather than waiting for them to eat up all the bait, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I've got two over 
a fair bit of bait, all the crushed and um, crushed boilies, a few holes, and then particle, and then that one on a little single, little uh, bag of pellets, just to see if they could get get down and take it in one mouthful. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely morning. Come on, have a look. Lovely blue sky today. A bit of a wind on today. But yeah, we had a few beers last night, celebrated Matt's capture. Sat by the fire. Um, got a little fire down here that Mark let us use. Made out of a gas canister. <laughs> Pretty clever little idea that. Um, yeah, so we sat by that last night. Had a few beers um, and celebrated Matt's capture of 60 pounds. I can't believe it. Biggest fish in the lake. <laughs> um, I had a 30, 30 pound mirror um, just into dark that you'll see. So yeah, I think we're on six fish between us now. Matt's had four, I've had two. That's three 30s, a couple of 20s and that's 60. Um, and in February, it's pretty good I think. Um, we're not doing too bad. Um, the next two, we've got two more nights. Um, definitely not night bites going on at the moment, which I'm not too, not too fussed about to be honest. I don't want to be getting up in that cold weather to be fair. Um, but it looks like, yeah, the afternoons are definitely the better time to be catching. So we'll see what we can do today. Feels all right, feels a bit slow and ploddy. Can't stop it. Mate, I can't stop it. Get in that net. Get in that net, yes! Oh, it's a big common, Matt. It's a big, it's a big common. Mate, I've never had a fight like that in my life. I could not stop that, my arm is killing me. Fucking hell, Matt. That is a beast. Oh, that's what we came for, innit? Have a look, Matt. Just gonna quickly show you what I've been catching on this week. First off, I've got the lead core leader that I'm splicing myself with the Plummet lead core um, 25 pound brown. Lovely stuff, nice and easy to splice. And we've got the lead, core, lead clip system, nice and just a weedy green. Nice simple, it's only just put on there. Comes off nice and easy on the take. And it's a three, uh, three and a half ounce lead. And then we've got the, the MG rig, the multi-German rig that I use. Um, and that is tied with super soft, ultra skin, uh, 20 pound, or no, that's 25 pound, silt. And a convert dark mugger in a size six. Some people might think size six is quite small for France, um, but generally I like to use a, sm a small hook really. Uh, I just find they hold in the fish's mouth a lot better. I don't move around so much, so once they go in, they kind of stay in. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you as well what I've been catching on hook bait wise. All three of my rods are on this now. Ooh. 
All three of my rods are on this now. It's the HMV Pro Wafters from Blake's Baits. And they are uh, cork balls, cork dust. Put in there, mate. Absolutely smell lovely. So we take one of them. Get all the star, bait needle. Right, so yeah, just simply top it with a bit of plastic corn that I've been using. Just a bit of visual and a little bit more extra buoyant as well. Put the bait on like that. I think you all know how to do this, but Take a bit of the bait floss. Ooh. I've got a micro ring swivel on there. Let's put it through once. Pull both sides down. And I thread it on like this. Pull the bait down to the bait screw. Pull that rest out. I just, I, I only just tuck it in to the top of the, so that it gives you a nice bit of gap between the bait and the hook. There's a bit more room there, pull that down. And then I simply just do three over time, um, three overhand knots to create like a little stop on the end. Bit fiddly, cold hands today. One, two, three. See, that's created like a little stop. Cut that off. End tags. <clears throat> and then I simply just give it a little blob with a lighter. Tidy it up. And there you have it. One of my hands. Nice and simple, You've got the doubled up section like I keep going on about. Works as a good kicker, bit of putty there. And you've got loads of movement on this rig and you can change the hook nice and easy. It sits, sits like that on the bottom. And that's it, that's what I've been catching this week on. And in England as well, I've been doing very well on this setup. And that's that. My hands on one of the new um, Spiro tackle, tackle bags. Uh, just wanted to show you because I think it's a really neat, tidy little clip. Um, right, so you can unclip the top here and it simply folds out to the side. They're still clipped on, they don't go walkies. And in this side, I like to keep uh, scissors, I've got more uh, rig bits, splicing needles, um, leg core leaders, and yeah, you can put anything you want on either side, but that's what I like to keep on that side. This side's very good. The other side, I'll keep leads in. Um, I'll keep all my leads. Got my lead in lead. Everything in there. And then the main bit, you can fit quite a lot in here. I've got all my hook links, all my hooks, packs, and they slide in quite nice and easy. Got all the uh, hook links, everything you need in there. I just thought I'd show you that because it's a really nice and easy way to just keep the tackle together. And I just love the way that it just all folds in, clips together. A little handle on one side. Really well built, nice and strong. Um, I think this actually comes from like an army background this stuff so the zips and everything are a bit like high quality and uh, you can tell on the stitching that it's nice and strong so I'm really impressed with the Spiro Tackle stuff at the moment um, I've got some other bags that I'll show you later February 30. Absolute buzzing, mate. Couldn't have asked much more than this, could we? No. <laughs> Someone told me at the start of the session we were going to have 10 fish by now. I would have uh, 
Well, yeah, what a thought they were lying. Incredible session, mate. Right, as you can see, um, back in the van, heading home. Um, just want to close the session up. I've had an unbelievable session, couldn't ask for any more. Um, Mark and Julie were great, absolutely spoiled us um, and looked after us really well. Uh, the weather was not too bad, cold at night, but nice and sunny in the day. Had nice back daytime bites and stuff. Um, yeah, me and Matt had a really good time. Matt fished well and he's broke his PB, which is mega as well. Biggest fish in the lake. Could, yeah, just couldn't ask for more really. Um, broke myself for PB, which I haven't done for a good few years now. It's probably getting on to eight to 10 years since I caught her. Another 50 pounder, but broke my PB by two pounds. So yeah, all round good trip, heading home now. Looking forward to seeing the family and uh, soaking up all the madness that's just happened.